Oh. Oh. I think it's live streaming. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's not good. I need to change the video resolution, apparently. Apparently, it needs to be 720p. Um. Okay. Hold on. I'll, I'll change it. Hold on. Alright. Okay. Live. Live. Oh. Please check video resolution. The current resolution is 720, which is not optimal. What? It just gave me the error that it needed to be 720 because it wanted 720, but then, and it was 480, but then I made it 720, and now it says it's, no, no, stop it, <laughs> okay, I'm putting it back to 480, so it doesn't lag and stuff, because at this point, it's probably lagging, or is it, let's see, da -da 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 -da. is it lagging, it doesn't look like it's lagging at all, which is really good, also, it took me ages to get the thumbnail right, so please appreciate that, I messed it up <laughs> a lot, um, let's see. So I also, I have it on a 60 second delay, so that should help it not be, not be, uh, super laggy. So, I tried also trying to get my camera to stream, but, uh, yeah, I have to get, in order to stream with my camera, I'm going to have to get an HDMI, a mini one, that, like, goes there. Um, yeah. Because this other cable here doesn't do it, so, yeah. Alright, cleaning up stuff. <sighs> I'm quite full of stuff here, but I got some cool stuff for Christmas. I got props, new props, 20 of them, for my whoop. And I also got a new camera for the whoop, which you can see here my issue is the camera tends to break a lot I mean the antenna on the camera because it's a cloverleaf antenna and uh, I think it's brass yeah it's brass and that stuff uh, tends to want to snap a lot when you run into ceilings and walls so I'm gonna get this one here put on there and this one I got it in PAL instead of uh, NTSC which that's the encoding if you didn't know so pal has a higher resolution but it is lower frame rate it's a 25 frames per second and it says my audio bit rate is zero which is interesting 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 <laughs> it's zero <laughs> it's not okay <laughs> my audio bit rate is zero how does that no that's not allowed um i don't know if anyone can even hear me then that's that's terrible. Okay. Anyways. Okay. I thought it said 5 volts to 5.5. I was like, wait, what? I can't do 5 volts. But uh, 2.5, that works. PAL. So, basically, PAL has a high resolution. It's like 625 lines or something like that. Um, instead of like 500, whatever. So, there's more lines because how... How this works, basically it's fast scan TV over radio waves, 5.8 gigahertz. And uh, what happens is it sends the image one line at a time. It's like really old TVs. Like now, of course, we have LED TVs and they just, you know, keep up really fast. But uh, back, back, back in the old days, they had uh, TVs that would use NTSC or PAL. And that's like what VHS is on. You know, ooh, video, you know, the old videotapes, those are the best. Got, like, Charlie Brown on those and Clifford. Yeah. Anyways, that's why they're so low quality is because they use this formatting, right, that these tiny cameras use now that for FPV. And basically, that's what they do is they send it one line at a time. There's a certain number of lines, and, of course, those lines scroll across. So it's like, nee, 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 yeah, whatever. And that's how you get your signal. And uh, there's also, so that's the resolution, and then there's also your frames per second, so how many times it scrolls across the entire screen, uh, how many times in a second it'll update all those lines. So, of course, for the one I have on here, which is, of course, the NTSC, because that is the North American standard, NTSC, and uh, that one is like... 
30 frames per second because it has something to do with like the frequency of our power supplies or something being 60 um, hertz or something like that and then for of course the European standard is PAL and well for basically the rest of the world including Africa and everywhere <laughs> and uh, PAL I forget what NTSC and PAL stand for but basically PAL of course it has high resolution but it's like 25 frames per second and of course movies are filmed at 24 frames per second so like you you don't notice it really uh, my stream right now is at 24 frames per second. Well, technically, te it says it's at 30, but it should be at 24. Like, that was the frame rate limit I put on it, so I don't know. But basically, 24 frames per second, but that means that each frame is a higher resolution. So, of course, when you're recording it, you're not going to get to see as much uh, in slow motion. You can't slow it down as much because there's not as many frames. But you can get a higher resolution, which is nice. And, uh, yeah. Of course, this is a quarter CMOS, and that's a third CMOS. So the sensor is a bit smaller on this one, but that also means it's lighter. So I can uh, stick it on there better and uh, probably go a little bit faster. Not that I need to go faster, because it's very fast. So then in here, of course, I've got another camera. Um, yeah, that I have. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my issue here, is that I've got too much stuff everywhere. Alright, so yeah. In there I've got another camera, which I have used in the past for... Uh -oh, my wire's stuck. There we go. Um, I've used that one for putting on my RC car, and I made a bracket to do so. Where'd it go? I put it somewhere, I'm telling you. Where did I put it? Hmm. Anyways... I use this battery here, which is from my quadcopter that's like underneath my bed there. Uh, so this is a 650 milliamp hour 1 1s lipo. It doesn't say the C rating anywhere on it, but it's just the one that came with that. And what's great about that is it's like the perfect size. And then I made where did I put it? Oh, there it is. This wire here. I got an adapter. And well, I made this adapter basically, which is the JST normal, the old ones, you know, red ones there. And I soldered that together and taped it and made a garbage job of this work. And then uh, to this wire that was to charge a tiny, tiny, tiny little quadcopter, which I actually still have here. Um, basically, the quadcopter fit inside that little area in the remote. It was tiny, tiny, tiny. Oh, okay, you know, just leave that. <laughs> and uh, the wire, it, well, it broke. It, I kind of crashed it in the snow shortly after I got it and somebody stepped on it and it was kind of really broken but anyways this is the charging cord for it and I made that soldered it together and made myself a handy dandy little adapter because that plugs into the thingy on this camera and then yeah I have power it's magical from that battery of course so then I got the power from that battery and it's amazing uh I don't know where I put my little um holder thingy though where did that go? I don't know. Oh, it's still over here. Okay, hold on. Ba -da -ba -ba. Hey! I don't even know if it's still streaming right now, but basically, this is my little adapter I made, so it's just not adapter. Um, brace, what do you call it? Mount? Mount. That's it, camera mount. So I can just stick it like up here, and I just tape it down or something, and basically put it here, lens sticks through there. Antenna sticks up, and it's all protected in here. And what's nice is the lens sticks through that hole, right? And that's kind of a friction fit. And then I've got these two pieces here, so if it does crash into something, like face down, it won't scratch up the lens at all. Or it shouldn't, anyways. And, uh, yeah, the whole camera is pretty much protected. I can put the battery right in here and glue it in or um, tape it in, I mean, or on the top. And I've used this on the rock tumbler. I mean, rock tumbler. What is my words doing? The thunder tumbler. These are like ten bucks on sale. It's amazing, and they go super fast. Actually, basically, it's just two brush motors, one in each like wheel in the back there, and then it has lights and stuff, and it makes a lot of noise, and it goes really fast, and it's hard not to do wheelies. Uh, and I just like stick this here, and it looks amazing driving around, and <laughs> it's really fun. Or I can stick it here, and at one point I was trying to make a mount to stick it right here in the driver's seat, but it didn't work. Is the stream still going? Uh, um, it is still going, and it's like, okay, hold on, hold on. 
here. And at one point, it works. I can't believe it's working. See, I got faster internet, so that's nice. Um, because last time I started streaming, last time I streamed with, with the video games, of course, with um, Clash Royale, and that was when I had slower internet, so it really didn't work well. <laughs> it was lagging like crazy. So, I have done no cleaning in the last ten minutes. <laughs> I've just talked, and I'm probably going to go at any minute, so let me just, um, I've got this thing, hold on, let me just, where do I turn around the camera at, there we go, okay, I got this thing, and, um, that's what I got here, so then I should be able to just put this, aha, in there, aha, Haha! -ha. Oh, I need to go higher though. There we are. <laughs> but now I can't see it. Oh dear, I gotta get my chair. Hold on. Hey, now I can stand on an office wheelie chair. So safe. All right. Now it needs to go even higher. Here we go. All right. Now I can like actually see stuff. Isn't that amazing? All right. <laughs> now what, what? What do I do though? That's what I need to figure out. Is where am I gonna put this stuff? Oops. Now I'm just messing everything up. Okay. See, this phone standard holder thing doesn't want to go. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Um. Okay. That works. Why not? American flags. All right. <clears throat> so. Oh, also, I'm going to make an airplane out of this guitar thingy. So, um, that would be fun. I'm gonna order some motors on Banggood. They're like nine bucks and they're pretty big as well. Uh, they're the equivalent, basically, of a C pack from Flight Test. And I'm getting 10 by 4.7. 10 by 4.7, right? Or was it 4.5? 4.7. I think it's 4.7. 1047 props. And I'm actually getting 10 of them, so it's 10 1047 props. It's like five bucks for 10 of them on Banggood. It's awesome. They're like even good nylon ones, too. So they have great reviews. So I'm gonna get those. Uh, this is all my batteries for my whoop. My goggles for my whoop. The actual whoop. <laughs> um, in seven days, my quad is coming. The Yushin Wizard TS215, right? It's like their, their best models they make. And, uh, it was like 150 bucks, which is really good. So, um, yeah. I got that for Christmas, but I didn't really get it because, like, it's not gonna get here for a while. Uh, so this is how I pack my goggles, actually. So I take off my circular polarized antenna, and I stick that in right where the nose piece, like where the nose goes, stick that in there. And I take my charging cube, which is just like an iPhone charging cube, right? Well, one of the really old ones. This is actually from an iPod 5. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, from an iPod 5. It's like six years old. So I stick that there, sort of. And then, uh, take this, that's my charging cord, and the wire for the AV input and all that. Uh, and I could put that, I just stick it right here. Charging cube that came with the goggles itself, stick right there. And then, of course, little nub protectors over the connectors, the SMA connectors. I think they're SMA, right? I don't know. I don't know the names of them, they're just thingamabobs and huzima what's. So instead of putting this in the bag where it came, because it was a pain to open it every single time, and that's why I actually had to like glue this, because it got all broken and ripped, because the plastic isn't great. But uh, instead of doing that, let me see, it goes that way, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Um, I just stick it on top, and it's fine right there. And then it's right there when I need it, instead of having to open up the bag and everything. So that's what I've got. And I just tuck this sort of in here. And then it's ready to go. Ready to close up. So that's how I get my goggles. And uh, I've got quite a few awesome flights. <laughs> Not really. They're, 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 they're semi-okay decent-ish. <laughs> semi-okay decent-ish. That's the new thing of the day. All right. Uh... So, they're, they're all right. I still have like 20 more, 24, 24 more that I have. No, 20, 22 more. I have 22 more of my DVR footage recordings for the Whoop that uh, they were supposed to be done before Christmas. 
<laughs> that are already actually uploaded to YouTube. I just am too lazy to go through and do all the the last tiny bit of stuff I need to do. And then also I've got like ten more after that. I don't know, five, ten more, yeah, something like that. Uh, on the on the DVR still, of course. <laughs> of course they're on the yeah, micro SD card is with the DVR, but whatever. Words schmerds. All right. Uh oh, oh, guitar almost fell. All right, so for my camera now with this, right now I've just got a sticky tape, um, and a 3M, you know, sticky tech company, 3M tech sticky stuff. Uh, and then I say uh and um too much. I need to stop that. Then I've got the rubber band going around because I found when I first had this before I put the canopy on that my issue I was having was that the camera would unstick itself. So I've got that there now, which means you can see the props in the picture, which doesn't look as nice. But, that's not good. I just blow on them to make sure they're spinning freely and there's nothing jammed up in them and they're not like scraping on the side of the duct either. Vanguard duct, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, yeah, that's how it's stuck on currently, and I should probably update the firmware, but I don't even know where the, I don't even, I don't even honestly know where the boot pads are to short out so that I can put new firmware on, so, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the problem. Also, the frame's still broken, I tried super gluing it, but, you know, it didn't really work, so frame is still broken from my crash 20 feet out, uh, yeah, 20 feet out, out of a tree, so, that's nice, and, oh, yeah, this is a chainsaw, <laughs> like, literally a chain that's, a, like, a handsaw, like, it's a chainsaw, ta-da, amazing, oh, I've got stuff to open as well, that I picked up after Christmas with the Christmas gift cards and money I got, I picked up some more stuff from Walmart and Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby has a lot of great stuff, so uh, that's the canopy that used to be on there, which picked it up, really picked it up off of the board, and uh, gave it a slight upward angle as well, so you didn't see the props, or the prop guards anymore. But uh, I don't have that on there anymore, because I felt like with it holding the antenna, because it kind of holds the antenna right here, I felt the issue with that was when I would crash, it would just bend it and break it, and I felt like having it like this would be better, because it just bends instead of breaking. And bending is much better than breaking. So, yeah. I haven't seen anybody actually watch the stream yet, which, you know, that's fine. It's just fun to talk, because now, if I talk to the camera, like to my phone, <laughs> instead of talking to myself, I seem less crazy. So that's awesome. Uh, let's see. I'm packing up the work for a while, I think, so I'm going to stick these in. And then that padding just goes over the top, close up. And this thing, this thing like this is not going to get broken anytime soon. Like, that's awesome. So, props and camera. So, these props are not the same ones that it came with. Because the ones it came with, they were actually pretty cool. They were very soft plastic. And so you could kind of bend them back. These ones are much stiffer plastic. I mean, you can still bend them a bit, but they're going to get broken more easily. But what's nice is I think they are... I, I don't know if they weigh the same or if they weigh more. I, I don't know. But they should be exactly the same for flying. They should have the same characteristics, flight characteristics. And they look cool because they're different colors. I got bright pinks and yellows, reds, blue, white. It's amazing. So, all sorts of different cool stuff there. 31 millimeter props by 0.4 for the shaft, 0.4 millimeter for the shaft. Which, of course, is just teeny, teeny, teeny little hole. I don't even know if it's in focus right now. Because, whatever, you know? So, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I'll just stick them over here with my batteries for now. I really should have those batteries in a lipo bag, but... <laughs> uh, let's see. Close this up now. Because that's how I do it. Make sure that's on the inside. I also keep a micro SD to normal SD adapter in there, so... I can take out my DVR micro SD card that's in there. I think it's 32 gigabytes, but you know, I it's like half full, and I have 170 videos recordings on it. Each of them is like minute at least to minute to three minutes. So 
here's my flight record here in case you were wondering I do keep a flight record and uh, I'm not very good at it all right hold on let me get up here so you can see it so of course I started here around flight 90 something or other I had last time the last time I had recorded on my phone my old phone which wasn't actually it was like a phone but it didn't have and a SIM card, so I didn't use it. It was an iPhone 5C, and uh, it kind of broke. Yeah. First screen I ever cracked. Dropped it right onto a basketball court on pavement. Anyways, six, Flight 69 was the last one I had recorded on there. So I started with 70 here, but there was quite a few I did between I start, but between the time I did that and the time I started this record. So I ended up erasing them. I'm going to go through all my files, all the video recordings, because I recorded every single flight. So I'm going to go through every single flight that I've recorded in order to find the... One that, you know, find what number I'm on. So anyways, got all these. Kind of got a system going now. You know, got all these. Here I started the real system. So I put the flight, like what number flight it was, with a big F. And then I've got the date and time, which I try to keep recording, like what time I did it. And I actually have the correct time on my DVR now. So it should help a lot. Uh, and day as well. Uh battery number so I record which battery I've been flying with so then I know and of course I've got a new system now where I put the B next to it so that makes sense so now it represents it and then the little f for the flight number of the battery so how many flights I have on each of these batteries so I'm gonna have all that recorded uh, except for the ones that you know I didn't record which is gonna stink that I don't have those because they I got they lost because I did record them on the phone, but they are lost because the phone broke before I because what I did is I screenshotted all of the flights, all of the recordings, all of my records. I screenshotted them, put them on a computer, the screenshots. But of course, I didn't have the chance to do that with the last few of them, which really stinks. But I can get the record anyways just from like how many flights I have just by looking at all my DVR footage and figuring out how many just based on the time. And the dates and all that but I cannot figure out how many flights on each battery so I'm just gonna estimate about one for each because that's how I kind of did it. I kind of cycled through one each uh, back then then I here have a description of where I was flying and like what I did on the flight if I crashed that kind of stuff so that's kind of how it works so my nice little flight record here so got that and that just goes inside inside the box for my transmitter and of course this knife that I, I mean <laughs> this pencil that I sharpened with my ah no no I can't flip it hold on hold on hold on hold on I need to get up higher I'm gonna stand on my wheelie chair holding a sharp pencil while flipping a bell song yeah yeah so smart right so basically I just you know sharpen this with my bell songs so it's like a really nice sharp point which is really awesome so yeah um, <laughs> so, now I'm just, uh, rambling now. Don't know why. Okay, so, uh-oh, oh, guitar's going down. Guitar down, guitar down. Okay, set that back up. What is that? That's the antenna for the radio on my clock that's over here. And it's now 12, 1247. It's 12, 1247. How'd that even happen? All right. Ugh, I'm trying to look at my phone screen because I moved the chair. <sighs> okay, that's fine. Um, basically how I pack up this, put that there, antenna down, of course, put my pencil here. This is a wire that has one of those connectors, a USB mini, mini, mini USB B, USB, yeah, okay, whatever. That's what I use to connect it to my computer for the simulator. And then I can put my pencil right there. Then, of course, this stick has to be in the middle for it to go down properly because I actually cut a hole in the middle as well here, this slot, so that I can keep the lanyard holder on, which is nice. Okay. And so this just goes on like so. Paper on top of there. Got my flight test lanyard, which just goes, just stick it over here. We got the box. Oh, this way. Ta da! Um, that there. Ta-da! It really bothers me that they put it sideways. Like, if they put it this way, I'd be so much happier. But they didn't! They had to put it this way, so, like, the box is sideways. Really annoying. Anyways. I'll put my lanyard, I'll just, like... What can I do with this? I'll just hang it, like, here. 
There we are. Ooh, now it's shaking. Uh oh. Okay. Let me take a look at the camera. Alright, that looks nice. Perfect. Oh man, this is great. I love this camera angle. This is great. I don't even know how the other stuff turned out, like showing stuff up close, but that's that's good right there. So, you'll take this box, bring it over here on my bed, and I'm going to put my other thing on top, because what I'll do for my tiny one is I have this tote bag, so that big is blue. Got it for free somewhere, I don't know where, but uh, yeah, big that big, put the, the transmitter box here, right in the middle, liquid bag over on the side. And then I put the goggles case on top of the box for the transmitter. And then I put my tiny whip box right next to that on top of the transmitter box still. And then I put the lanyard right along the side. My pencil, of course, inside everything. Everything I've got is right there. It's perfect, right? I used to also carry voltmeter and everything so I could... So I could you know, measure the voltage, because I used to measure the voltage before and after every flight. And when I charged it, I used to record how long I charged it for. And that took forever and took all the fun out of it. So I didn't, I stopped doing that. I just kind of gave up. So now I just record the date and time and what flight number it is and all that sort of stuff. So put this over here. All right. I have space on my my lovely little bureau which you know basically <laughs> this is my desk <laughs> this is where i build all my planes and everything like that nice smooth surface what i have is this big sheet of cardboard that i got like those a sled came in it like six years ago five was it five four five six years ago something like that big big box for the sled right it was one of those fancy sleds with like the runners and everything yeah it was awesome and uh I still have it. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm rambling again. So, I have a box from that, which I cut one side off of. It's just that long, and I stick it right on there. It's great. Because uh, then it protects this nice surface. And then I also have another piece of cardboard. When we're doing some cutting, of course, I have that other piece of cardboard underneath the big piece of cardboard. And I have a cutting board under that. Well, it's like a cutting mat, one of those plastic ones, like for fruit and vegetables, like portable ones. But it's plastic, you know. But it, it just keeps me from cutting my table because that would be bad all right camera mount thingy thingy i'll just stick those over with my lipo batteries which are just sitting in a little plastic organizer which is completely unsafe yes i know but i don't i don't really use my lipo bag i should i only really use it when i'm putting my lipos my little lipos for my whoop in so that i can bring them places right i don't really use it other than that, I really should, but, uh, you know, if I'm going to be storing it, sure, but, like, this lipo here, this one, this one is garbage, I, I do not recommend these, okay, I don't recommend these, because I got two, right, 1,000 milliamp hour, 25C, uh, continuous, 50C burst, discharge rate, um, what am I missing, oh yeah, three cell, three cell lipo, right, and I got two of them. This is number two. I labeled them, of course, because I wanted to keep track. And this one, number two, I only got two of them. And one out of the two had a defective cell. This one here, the cell number two, it was completely bad. And, you know, the other one, the other cells and the other lipo battery, I, I haven't used it in over a year. And I just checked the voltage, like, a few days ago. And it was still, it had gone down like a hundredth of a volt in a year. So it's like, great, right? This other one, the other cell in this lipo, the sec second cell, the middle one, it went to zero in, a, in, I think it was a month, right? So, yeah, I had to, I was balance charging, you know, not charging, but like balancing it with this Balancer. This is awesome, by the way. I love this thing. It's a nice aluminum body. Um, it's also a watt meter, so you can plug in your battery on this side and your ESC on this side, and it tells you how many milliamps you use, and the watts, the amps, all that good stuff. Up to 100 amps. And I'm going to have to go soon because people got home and I can't talk loudly anymore. But basically, this tells you good stuff. But I plug this in, right? Let me get up here. And you press OK for a LiPo. LiPo check, and 
Look at that. Look at that. It's terrible. Look at this. It's terrible. Okay. Press OK again. Look. 3.77, 3.78. That's where I, I had charged from 3.79 a year ago. So they're still good. Middle one, zero. Going completely to zero. Which, I mean, it's not dangerous because it's at zero volts, but I can't charge it, of course. Uh, which stinks. Bye bye. $10 battery in the trash. I mean, I'm not going to throw it in the trash. I could probably use a two cell until it dies and then I have to throw it away because, you know, dangerous to charge battery like that. Shouldn't leave it around in case someone does charge it by accident and then, you know, kaboom! It's bad. <laughs> Fire. House fires. Ooh. That's why you don't stand on wheelie chairs. All right. How long was this stream? I have to go. But, uh, it was 30 minutes. 30 minutes. I can do this later as well, which is fun. So, yeah, awesome stuff. Thanks for watching. And, uh, I gotta put this. Yeah, hold on. Where did I even put my lipo bag? Where did I put my lipo bag? That is a good question. Where did I put it? I don't know where I put my lipo bag. I can't find it. I don't see it anywhere in my room. I don't know where my lipo bag is. Well, you know what? Where is it? Where is it? No, seriously, like, where is my lipo bag? I cannot find it anywhere. It's... Oh, there we go. I remember putting it here. <laughs> oh, that's my bin of junk, by the way. This was our trash can, which was a hamper. But then it was our trash can in the house, and then we wanted to get rid of it. So I grabbed it, because I grab all the garbage in our house, and I collect it. <laughs> and it's just full of a bunch of nonsense. Like, uh, dog toy squeakers, M&M containers, toilet paper rolls. That's the strap from the guitar, which I, I don't know, I'll use it for something, right? These are the... Th the ties that hold back, like, your curtains from your windows, because we have these old curtains that we were getting rid of and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Got a lipo bag. Got my stuff. You know what? I'm just going to call it there. And, uh, yeah. That's fun. The new car. This is awesome. Definitely going to do some more running of that sometime and film it for sure. Right now it's like 40 degrees, so it's like wicked hot out because, yeah, I don't know, winter's just being weird because... Last year, it was 17 degrees, and then this year, it decided to be 50 degrees on the same day, but a year later. So yeah, oh, here's my plants, by the way. Plants are cool. Yes. On this thing here, I have no clue how I'm going to get that aloe out, because that's aloe. I don't know how I'm going to get it out, but it's uh, really in there. Yeah, it kind of grew, grew itself and got stuck. Oh yeah, that's another plant I haven't finished. And uh, here's another plant I haven't finished. It has some pigs on it. <laughs> and ooh, what else? This is a plane that I crashed and kind of broke a bit, but that's there as well. I kind of refixed it, but then I haven't flown it in over a year. It's the first plane I built. I know, because I built a sparrow first, mini sparrow. But uh, second plane I built, first plane I flew and had the electronics for, and then uh, I never flew it again. So <laughs> then in here, oh boy. We got the 1,000% toothpick ladder. I still have to put together that video. I, I filmed a bunch of footage and time lapse and cool stuff like that, but I never actually edit it together. I do this a ton. I, I film stuff, but I never edit it together and upload it, which is why live streaming is great, because you don't have to do that. So, you know, it's just already there. Uh, so, yeah, 1,000% toothpick glider. Toothpick glider design. It's these things here. Literally gliders made from toothpicks. Designed by a channel called Foam Test. He's really cool. You should check him out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, I made a 1,000% version out of foam board and a dowel rod. And then this is the simple soarer. There's the wing. Five foot wingspan. There's the body. I kind of messed up with this here. I had to put straws in because my wire that I use for, um, my wire that I use for for push rods is really terrible and it bends all over the place but i got new stuff now so that's good but uh yeah it's, it was really terrible so i had to actually cut it open so i could put <laughs> straws in so that it doesn't bend but still it's like you know this wire is like really really bad right anyways um got that stuff got a couple of these like cheap ten dollar gliders up there like that you can get at walmart and stuff and then oh that's the simple sparrow wing that's the simple sparrow body and then there's two more, like, Dollar Tree gliders. Amazing. Oh, don't fall. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, and here's another design by Foam Test. This was, uh, 
his little I, I, I you like how I kept the sticker here yeah it's nice right so yeah this is a design by foam test as well which is really cool actually uh I like my color coded hangers by the way yeah I know right it's awesome <laughs> so this is meant to be this size and have a little tiny motor on the back here and fly push prop and I'm gonna probably build a I think I have a 200 percent version already printed out the files plans for you know with the pdf thingy adobe acrobat whatever i did the thingies and whatchamacallits and made it 200 percent and printed it out but i still have to glue the plans together and stuff i mean tape them together and cut them out and then i can make a 200 percent version which might work with powerpack b so yeah okay bye